What is up everybody, it's Larry back with you and today we're talking some more data solutions. Now in this video we're going to talk about booting up your Mac in recovery mode. So what is recovery mode? Recovery mode essentially is just a piece of your hard drive that's sectioned off with the latest operating system on there. You can use this mode to diagnose issues, restore your Mac from a time machine, save point, or even completely wipe your Mac, which is something you're definitely going to want to do if you end up selling your computer. So you may want to use recovery when you download the newest OS and then you find out that it's not compatible with some software that you use. What I like to do is when a new OS comes out is do a complete wipe of the system and do a fresh install. That way I know everything's clean and there's no overlapping issues. Another reason to use recovery is if you're working on something and you've lost it, you can go back to a certain point and recover the whole OS at that point and have all your data there. Another reason you would want to use it if you lost some very important work and you go back to a point on your time machine and then you can recover it from there and then you'll have that data there from that point in time. But most of the time software updates and all that go perfectly fine. They go off without a hitch. But just in case something does happen, you're gonna to wanna to know how to recover from it. So now that we know what recovery mode can do, let's talk about the steps that we're gonna use if we need to use it. So let's talk about booting your Mac into recovery. First of all, to get to recovery, you're gonna to wanna to restart your Mac. You can do that with the little Apple logo up top and then restart. As you restart it, hit Command and R until you see the Apple logo. If you have an older computer, you'll hear the chime, but the newer ones, I don't believe there's a chime anymore, so you're gonna wait to see that Apple logo. Wait a few minutes and the OS X utility window will pop up. Just so you know, if you do this and then all of a sudden you see your login screen, you didn't do it right, so you're gonna to wanna to restart and try that again. But if you did get it right, you're gonna have a few options. So you can restore it from a time machine backup like we talked about a few moments ago. You're gonna to have to make sure that you actually have time machine set up and have a time machine backup to actually restore too. Or you can fully restore the OS like I talked about before, or you can fully reinstall the OS like we talked about before. That'll give you a clean slate. So whether you wanna just start off with a clean slate because maybe you're having some bugs, or like I mentioned, if you're gonna sell it, you definitely wanna do this. If you're not really sure what your issues are, you have some options there to get help from Apple Online, or you can launch Disk Utility. This will help troubleshoot and repair disk issues. I know I don't know what your issue is if you're watching this. I'm not going to pretend to tell you which one you should be choosing. That's for you to figure out. But I highly recommend if you can't do it, you need to get with Apple support. This screen is what you're going to see booting your Mac in the standard recovery mode. This means it is booting using data stored locally on your own hard drive. But what do you do if that portion of your hard drive with recovery has become corrupt? Well, Apple is giving you a handy way to recover from that. As long as you have an internet connection, they'll talk to the Apple servers, your Mac will talk to the Apple servers, and it'll do some checks and some verifications, and then you can actually, it'll actually push the OS to your device. So all you really need is that internet, internet connection, and Apple's gonna help you out. That's a big advantage of having a Mac when you have issues like this. Because if your hard drive is corrupted and can't boot into recovery mode, your Mac will default into the internet recovery mode. You can also manually boot into internet recovery mode when restarting again after the chime or when you see the Apple logo, press Command, Option, and R instead of just Command and R. So to reiterate, this seems pretty obvious and I mentioned it before that you need an internet connection to use this option. So if you're not connected via ethernet, you'll be prompted to connect to your Wi-Fi. So let's talk about how you can create a bootable drive in recovery mode. So if your Mac operating system is really old, like 10.11 or older, then you may not have the recovery options that we're talking about. So if this is you and your internet recovery isn't working, your local recovery isn't working, like nothing seems to be going right, don't worry, not all is lost. We can create a bootable installer on a flash drive. So what you're going to need is a USB flash drive, at least 12 gigabytes, uh, if you don't have one laying around, you can go anywhere and pick them up for very, very cheap nowadays. So if you do have one laying around and you have some stuff on it, make sure you offload that stuff because this process is going to wipe that flash drive clean before it puts the OS on there and makes a bootable drive. So now you got your flash drive. We're going to need to find the Mac OS installation files. Depending on which version of Mac OS you're running, you can get these files from software update and system preferences on the Mac App Store. Depending on the version you're running, you may only be able to get certain operating systems from the App Store. If you're running Catalina, 
you can just go to the App Store and get Catalina. Just to make it a little bit easier for you, I'll leave a link to Catalina in the Mac App Store down in the description below. So then all you're gonna do is click on the Get button, download the install file. It's important that you don't open this file, just leave it downloaded on your machine. So let's start making the installer, but keep in mind you gotta have Mavericks or newer OS for this to work. Launch the disk utility. If you can't find it, press command and spacebar to open up spotlight and just search disk utility. You may have to click the view, then show all if your device doesn't appear. Once you see it, select the drive in the sidebar and click erase. Select Mac OS extended journaled as the format and then choose GUID next name your drive. Something like Mac OS Catalina. Doesn't make it too complicated and just check your spelling. Something like Mac OS Catalina doesn't make it too complicated and check your spelling. You'll need to refer to this in a terminal command later. Then click erase and give it a few minutes while a portion is created and then click done. Next, open up the terminal again and you can use spotlight for this command the space bar and search terminal. Then you're gonna to need to put a prompt into terminal. I'll leave a link down in the description for multiple operating systems so you can just copy and paste that text into terminal. It's important that you replace Mac OS Catalina with the name of your drive. In my example, I named it Mac OS Catalina, so you may have named it something different, so just keep that in mind. Then just hit enter and enter your password. You may not see the characters appear as you type. This is expected, just hit enter once you're done. Terminal will then warn you that it's gonna erase your drive, hit Y, and hit enter. The files will start to copy to your drive, and this may take a little while, but it'll tell you that it's done when it's completed. Now you're ready to plug that drive into the machine that you wanna install it on. Once it's plugged in, start the Mac and hold down the option key, and then click next to install. Your Mac will show the startup manager and you can select the external drive as your startup disk. Next, click on install Mac OS and click continue. Mac OS will start installing on your Mac as soon as you do that. Okay, so here's another tip for you. This is optional, but you can recover your lost data on your Mac with recovery. So if you end up do have having problems and you have to wipe your computer or you have to go back to a point in time machine but unless you actually did back up your files or back up and have a time machine to go back to but if you didn't do a backup with time machine or you don't have your files stored somewhere else if you're in a situation like that and you need to recover software I highly recommend recover it Recover it is a great program to help you recover lost data, corrupted data, things like that. So if you accidentally deleted a file or you have a corrupted hard drive, you can use Recover it. Super easy and wonderful to use. So I hope this video helped you guys out if you are having issues where you're trying to recover your hard drive or you're trying to do a clean install of Mac OS. Again, there's all kinds of links and text down in the description below. I highly recommend you guys check that out if you're going through this so you can just copy and paste some stuff because you really don't wanna mess something up in terminal when you're trying to do this. So I hope you're feeling a little bit better about this. You're not as worried as you were maybe before you came to this video when you're having some issues. Let me know if this video helped you down in the comment section or if you have a question, leave that down there as well. And we'll try to help you out if we can. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you make sure you see new content as soon as we put it out. That's gonna be it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.